Welcome back, everybody. After our extended break of the D2CL, we have returned for our final game of the group stages. I'm no longer alone for one of the rare moments we seem to have here at Joint Dota. Both the capitalists as well as myself are here in the studio. Yeah, oftentimes if we are actually in the same building together, we're yep. actually, you know, I'm in the other studio yeah. across the way. Yeah. And we're both casting. In something two months, it could different. be like you're up there and I'm I down know. here. It's just like you never know, peoples. It's uh, as we plan our massive expansion of the Freaks mm -hmm. for You offices, it's going to be terrific. Uh, for now, though, man, we get to come in last match of the group stage, and there's a lot at stake for this match. There uh, there's a lot at stake for this matchup. It's a full best of three, but if Fnatic wins, they qualify. If Sigma wins, we force a three-way tie with the potential then to go down to matchups and win. So if you have if you have more wins mm -hmm. than the other, the opposite team, and if you have a loss, it's a negative point. Obviously, if, if you win it, it's a, it's a positive point. Right. Um, so if if the matchups don't sort it out, then the points sort it out, mm -hmm. which is how we actually did uh, Group Two, happen exactly the same way. But let's actually look at our teams while we're. Uh, while wow, we're sitting here, we'll, uh, we'll bring them up. So Sigma, our first cab off the rank. They've really been struggling of late. I don't think anyone's going to say these guys are looking oh, yeah. in good form. Well, pretty much they've had at least, uh, you know, one permanent stand-in for the last almost month or so. Like, they have just not had their full roster. However, uh, tonight, I think, was the first night that they finally got them together. Earlier, they were playing, and uh, they're looking a little bit better. I was watching some of their game from before, and I think that uh, despite the fact that they didn't do well, Looking a lot better. Yep. And, uh, of course, their opponents tonight, I don't think anyone's going to say these guys are looking out of form. Uh, Fnatic, they play wonderful, beautiful strats. I love watching these guys. The support meepos, you always look for them. <laughs> but they've, they've got uh, great initiation. They don't really mix things up because they don't need to. What mm -hmm. they normally run is not really broken. So it's very Stockholm standard. As, uh, we're already halfway through our draft. We're going to flash over to that right now. So as you can see, talk about Stockholm standard. It's going to be the Wisp and Tiny coming out for Fnatic. So the normal big combination between Era as well as Notel. We get the Batrider pickup as well. So that could be our offlaner. It could be our mid solo. We do know uh, of recent times would have to say the Batrider will be in the middle lane as opposed to the offlane. Mm -hmm. But they keep their options very wide open. While Sigma go with a lineup which looks very similar to a lineup I cast previously during the D2CL. We get M, the Spirit and Triumph Protector put together and they get the Bane for control. Yeah, this is something Sigma, and they just enjoy running Bane right now anyway. And Ember Spirit, in my mind, if you're not, if that hero is not banned out, pick him up first pick because he is versatile enough that allows you to work around your draft. You can run late game strats around an Ember Spirit and allow his early uh, mid game aggression to be able to buy you time for a harder carry to be able to farm up. You can run a carry Ember Spirit and have you get really, really aggressive. Normally, you don't like to see the hard carry Ember Spirit, in my mind, going 45, 50 minutes in because he is a risky carry. However, if you're planning on you know combining that with a heavy gank strat or even a, a little bit of push, Ember Spirit is very, very strong thanks to his sieging tactics, due to his high amount of mobility, and he is just a bugger to try and kill. Thanks to the it just it's so obnoxious, and you pretty much have to you force the other team into getting heavy amount of disables, which is exactly what Fnatic is doing now. Look at that mm -hmm. second pick, right? They got their tiny wisp. Sure, that's great. Now. All the tables coming out. Batrider and Shadow Shaman, two of the best heroes to be able to slow up that Ember. Yeah, it's it's really going to force troubles for Ember. It's also going to allow Fnatic to have such early game pressure. We normally say timing point for Tiny is Aghanim Scepter being up and running, but with Mass Serpent Wars adding onto all of that, goodbye tier ones. Mm -hmm. Very good luck. Good luck. May, may you survive past 10 minutes. Uh, chances are very minimal. No. Uh, the laning wise, though, I'm interested to see how Fnatic want to try and run this. Normally, would say safe lane. Would say Safe Lane, Shadow Shaman, Tiny, as well as Wisp. Uh, especially going up against a Bane Line and a Tree and Protector coming up from Sigma. This should still be a Safe Lane Ember Spirit, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, either that or Sigma. They could do something which they have played around in the past. It's either going to be a Line in the solo mid roll for Fader, which is the more likely hero to go into this. Mm. But Sigma, as well as, uh, well, it wasn't Fnatic that did it. I think it was Rock's Kiss because they did everything. Um, they ran a Tree and Protector as a core. Yeah, I would I would say I'm actually leaning towards the Tree and Protector as a core here. Uh, especially since looking at Fnatic's lanes, I'm thinking dual. Uh, you need to be able to run something up against that Ember Spirit. 
I'm not sure, entirely sure, how well Tiny Wisp will be able to do, but you know at the very least you will be able to win that lane uh, fairly early on, at least level two, uh, level one and two. Tiny Wisp can put in a lot of aggression. You pick up that early bottle, possibly. I go for a fast bottle build on the Wisp. That gives you enough regen between the two of you to be able to survive through a lot of that aggression. I would say put the Tiny Wisp in middle to shut down the Ember and uh, farm up and put put, put another uh, another decent semi-carry going into the safe lane with the Shadow Shaman and have a Bat Rider off lane. Uh, that, that's just what I'm seeing out of this from Fnatic. There's definitely other ways they can run this. For example, the Bat Rider mid. I don't really like Bat Rider mid, though, up against the Ember Spirit because mm -hmm. that is you don't actually have enough aggression to be able to punish Ember early. And yep. if you don't punish him in lane early, like pre-level 3, then you're going to start having a really bad time. As he starts to pick it up level 5, level 7, he becomes a real terror. And I don't really look at Fnatic's lineup, and I don't see the immediate disables that are going to hold him down. Batrider yep. needs a blink. Shadow Shaman, you'd like to be able to see a blink as well from him. Otherwise, like those heroes just won't be able to get close enough to Ember Spirit to shut him down. Yeah, I'm with you on that one, man. You want someone that can punish him early on? You just got it. Slark comes in for Fnatic as their final selection. So you get your wish, man. That'll be a Batrider on the off lane. Um, I say bat rider on the off lane. You, it, it could be the dual lanes. It could be even Slark and Wisp together in the early stages to mm -hmm. give Tiny the full space and Shadow Shaman just pulling. Yeah, Fnatic, they're always so dynamic in their, in their lineups. Like you, you can't limit this to one set of lanes, mm -hmm. which is going to make life very difficult for Sigma because they don't really have any kind of scouts unless they can pick up like a Nature's Prophet mm -hmm. as their final hero here. They've got no real way to scout. And that, I suppose that does give them a lot of power for their split push as far as like Ember Spirit's maneuverability in the later portion of the game's great. But they need killing potential, and that's where Quop is now going to come to the mix up. They needed a silence hero that worked nicely up against the Slark. I guess the Orchid will be the choice from the Queen of Pain. How well it will work, that's a question mark. But also check out who's playing what. Yeah, so that's what I was checking out there. Matt is on the Tree and Protector. So, yeah, you get a support Tree and Protector. Uh, actually, no. No, you don't. Yeah, this has got to be like, they, unless they're running. Um, unless they know because it's, their it's dual lane's coming out, they run an aggressive tri lane and give um, a free lane up. You think there's going to be a swap? You see, that's what I was thinking, but they're not swapping yet. So I was thinking an aggressive tri lane and free up two solos in your mid and your safe lane. See, I'm, I'm still down for the aggressive tri lane. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, like, they need some transitions up. So if you give Quop and you give Ember Spirit the full space, then I feel this is okay. But it really should still be the Tree and Protector getting the, getting the hardcore farm. A Bane with farm early on, it's not enough. And Bane's also one of these heroes where Nightmare will protect him to a point, mm -hmm. but with a Wisp toss, uh, with a tiny toss, you should be able to get any hero in range of Miguel to initiate. Mm -hmm. If it's going to be Hex, if it's going to be Shackles, either way, you won't be able to control him once the hero is tossed in. So, yeah, I'm not liking this off lane for Miguel. Mad will try and protect him as much as possible. Uh, in fact, they're already preparing up with this top lane Shag Box, just uh, delivered one tango for someone who will be in need. But you get the, you get the right lanes out from Fnatic. So, Ira will be the middle lane with no tell. You get a safe lane Harney, so he gets very quick levels on that Slark, which means a, a quick transition in. Fly will be the support in the bottom lane, and he's going to be helping Trixie on this off lane. This is going to be either stacking inside their own jungle, stacking up the Ancients, anything yeah. they can do. Yeah, I don't think Fly is actually going to be sitting in lane a whole lot here. I think he's just sitting on the rune. You might see him stacking up Ancients, but yeah. I, there's just no way he's going to be sitting here. At his the his line, primary so. camps are going to be these guys yeah, right here. Exactly. If they're stacked up, Trixie gets a little bit of farm, and then they just put him into the jungle, and that's just a quick bump. You're going to get your 2150, and you start walking around with your Blink Dagger. However, because of what they were doing there, because he was sitting on the rune, he actually misses out on a very, very key thing here. Ward has already gone down blocking the pole. So, and they, and they won't be able to realize that until the minute mark, and then Fly won't even know exactly where it's at. He doesn't have counters. So there goes that whole entire pole. And it's just going to be now just straight up dual lanes, and no, uh, no advantage is going to be given to Fnatic. <laughs> I, I don't see a, like a massive problem coming out from this because Fly needs to be in the lane anyway. So while the Observer Ward's going to be there, yes, there's no pull. But at the same time, with Harney's ability to kill, once he hits that level 2, once he has the pounce, then it's more trouble for Sigma to be up on this top lane. Because Harney would just stay on the front lines. He de definitely needs a PMS though. Like this Stout Shield will not do. 
He, he needs to actually deck himself out a little bit more than this. Yeah, this is a very, very aggressive dual lane oh, coming middle out. middle lane. Actually, no, it's going to be okay. It's just no tell and era doing their normal thing. Mm -hmm. But with that aggression, now no tell has bottle already up and running. Oh, bottom though. Trixie's in some serious trouble. Fade, does he have one more jump? There's no fisting. Yeah. Trixie gets back in time. Yeah, very, very dangerous. This, uh, you know, Batrider isn't really known for surviving in the off lane very well. Uh, he's able to kind of get aggressive, Ooh, but. Era has no follow up. Ooh. But even just that fist. The attack of Tiny into Queen of Pain really drops a low. And she doesn't have anything up just yet. And the Spirits are taking away the Living Armor charges. So there's no extra life points coming back to her. But it really feels like they're trying to run a, like, like a, a bottleless Queen of Pain. That's what it looks like here in the middle lane, which is not really going to help out. They, obviously, they're assuming they're not going to get Rune Control, which, by the way, is on bottom. This should be denied up very quickly by the Lion as a priority. So no tell is unable to pick that one up. Yeah, he really needs to do that because the fast bottle build is uh, up for No Tail, and he would love yeah, to be able come. to re Yep. Well, nicely done. Perfect timing for that. Yeah. But yeah, this is a big advantage right now for Sigma, right? They're getting a pull, and both teams have supports that are very, very uh, level dependent. Like Lion is one of those m very, very similar to Shadow Shaman. Does a lot going into mid to late game. That the problem is getting to that point. So Paz, he does have that pull available to him. Sashka's having some fun times here with Ear in the middle lane. He dropped him down about 100 life points, but up on top lane. The Nightmare now into the Leech Seed. Fly, he's only got Shock as well as Shackle, which means he will not be able to survive through this one. But Harney, if he can get some revenge kills for this, then it kind of becomes oh, worth it. So he intercept. goes in, pounces on Miguel, holds him there quickly. But he can't keep up the pressure. They won't get a revenge kill from this. Man is so low on 33 life points. But they're going to survive through all of this while on bottom lane, Harney running away from Fader. Uh, sorry, Trixie running away with 110 life points. It's just a Harney on Batrider. Um, <laughs> while, uh, while Ira is just going to keep chilling in the middle lane, farming up. Yeah, that was a really, really good interception there from Miguel. He, uh, he, because he picked up boots fairly early on, he had that movement speed, and he got in front of the Slark, um, which is really well done. Granted, he was kind of on the side of the Slark, but you could tell that was his motive, that he was trying to get in front of the Slark so he could intercept that pounce to keep Mad alive, and that's exactly what happened. So really well done by Miguel there. And their dual lane, it's, uh, it's kind of paying off. Sure, they found the squishy Shadow Shaman alone, uh, but they're also shutting down the Slark's farm, which is really, really the key. This uh, this lane, while you classify both of these heroes as pretty defensive, because they're so defensive as nature, it means they can just go balls to the wall in aggressive harassment. This bank can go super far forward and, and just auto-attack Hani repeatedly and doesn't have to fear pretty much anything thanks to Mad sitting on the side ready with the living armor as well as the leech seed. Yeah. That's a very difficult lane to kill off. I'm still wondering though what's really being traded off for all of this because right now like, Queen of Pain's keeping up with the CS, but she's not dominating over the top of Era right now. Right. Which means Era is still finding farm up on that tiny. And late game, Sigma will lose this. There, there is no question mark in my mind about this at all. Harney, oh, he's low. He has to leave himself away. He was really considering the Dark Pact as oh, well. Oh, Paris! Middle lane. Oof. He, I don't know what he was doing there. Sakshia, he picked up an Invis rune and then threw down a... Uh, a scream that hit neither the tiny nor the west and just hit a range creep. Like he completely misjudged the range of it, missed everything, and then was right next to a tiny with a big combo ready to go. That was a very, very risky play from him. Either that or he's trying to bait out the mana usage, but uh, yeah, yeah, that doesn't make sense because no. you got that bottle whisk. On top of that, like Air is bringing in some extra items. He's like gonna have those upgraded boots soon. So uh, that's still just more mana pool going the way of a tiny. Yeah. You're never going to be able to deplete that for good. You're right, man. I, I'm really worried that Sigma's going up against a ticking clock, which I, I say worried because mm -hmm. I really feel like their lineup has such fantastic killing potential. Like, you know, I'm not just talking about like Miguel and what Mad, Mad, Mad and Miguel can keep themselves alive and be a huge buffer for the rest of the team. But once you start adding in that Lion Finger of Death, it's a lot of burst damage coming out from him. It's Fader who's getting a lot of farm on bottom lane up to phase Top. boots as well. Um, I'm also watching middle lane. Avalanche toss and a blink away to safety. They won't be able to dive in deep enough to kill off Paris, but as you said, top lane Shadow Shaman will die at the tree and protector. Yeah, they're just a simple sleep and then they get a melee range with the leech seed going down. Shadow Shaman has no hope. I mean, he pretty much has to sit. He, he can't be in range of anybody here. His only job should be to wake Honey up if he's in a bad position. 
<laughs> Soshka here wants some space, but uh, Fate has TP'd himself into this lane. There's still some train str strength threads there, but the Wisp, if he even if he re relocates him with a follow up stun from Pass, it's now going to be possible for two kills, but Era throws him away. He's going to almost stick out. The last attack from the Ember Spirit will get the kill there, but it was uh, six life points, was what the Shadow Strike brought him down to. We also saw Trixie move himself out of the jungle and come in towards this middle lane. So he's just trying to soak up the experience in the absence while Harney, Nightmare up on top lane, Leech Seed combination. They've got Living Armor, so diving out the tower is no problem. He's just going to pounce in, try and keep him on the leash. The shock's going to be there, but they've already killed off Harney into the shackles. But Fly, that's going to dive it. Leech Seed comes off cooldown three seconds time, and Fly does the right decision. TP's out, but only fakes it. Now goes into the Hex. Trixie TP's himself in. He's got a lot of sticky napalm possibilities right now with the Firefly 2. Mad can't really hope to juke this out. They need and to no slow him tail. down, and now no tail comes in for the extra kill here. And Mad, just a quick leech seed, but he'll die at the Bat Rider. So it goes into the Blink Dagger Fund. Look at middle, though. Yeah, Era can't get close enough, and Mac now he's in trouble. He's really dived deeper on this tower. The Toss throwing Fader away from him, but a quick jump in. Stick charge to keep him alive on 28 life points. He's going to try and juke it in the tree line. Come back up through the mid. No tail, in fact, finds himself up on the high oh, ground, beautiful. giving him the stick charges to keep alive. And they cover Era's retreat. Yeah, I was just about to say that, like, Sigma's whole entire lineup is built for this really early to mid-game aggression. And uh, they needed to be able to move the Ember Spirit around the map. And that's exactly what Feta did. He went, ganked up Era earlier, and then went back to base and smoked up immediately Trouble. went back to mid. Fiend's Grip on top lane, oh, but nice Hani, pack. the Dark Pack started off. He will get Nightmare out, but Hani breaks the first ultimate of Miguel. Yeah, that was... Uh, he, he, that was just pretty much on the bane. Like, he had already popped the Dark Pact pretty early on before Miguel even attempted that. So, that was just a little bit of a, a little bit of an error there from Miguel. That he could have just waited that out. Oh, this rune control has been really perfect by Sigma. Yeah. Fader comes and watches over it. And, uh, Queen of Pain, just quick bottle up and, uh, pick up the rune. Then she can start ganking up. There's an Invis rune too, so it's an action making rune. Hasn't triggered it, so, uh, won't be surprising up Fnatic at all with it. One thing that is really, really lacking right now for Sigma is a lack of bottle on Ember Spirit. We're going to see another smoke up from him, and he's going to make, make another like solo man rotation around the map. But he needs to be able to have a bottle to keep up this mana use of his. It's why you sometimes see like uh, Sing Sing's Ember Spirit, you know, go for mana boots. Like that, yeah. this hero is so mana dependent. The fact that he doesn't have mana boots, nor does he have a bottle, is just kind of absurd. If he does not make these ganks actually successful, he's wasting so much time here because he can't immediately go back to the fountain, heal up, and have a full bottle, bottle ready to go. Top lane fight. They already start off the initiation. Honey pounces himself away. He may have a shadow dance on this one for a moment. Goes inside the tree line to try and evade, evade their vision. That gives him time to heal up. He's got Pounce available in a moment. And Mad, he'll be careful. He may die right now. Shadow Dance into the Dark Pact. Really hitting hard on him. In the meantime, though, with a rotate in from the relocate. It's Era, in fact, picks up a double kill. Trying to lock him in the corner. Two seconds until he gets pulled back out of this one. But the Shackles is an avalanche and toss combination. Fader killed off. Era picks up a triple kill. Really punishing Sigma for coming underneath the Tier 1 tower. And all they get in return is a kill on a slark while they feed Tiny what is a full set of drums, basically. You know, I, I hate to ask this question. Yeah. But I really have to wonder how many times Feta has played Ember Spirit so far. Because it, you, you saw that that was a situation where you could have thrown down a remnant and kept up with the slark and made sure that he didn't get that time for a regen. Instead, they spent so much time like trying to search around instead of just throwing down a remnant. And a mm. big problem was the fact that Feta, I'm sure he wanted to hold on to what little mana he had there yeah. and didn't want to use the remnant. However, you can't really do that. You're giving slark the opportunity to be able to find regen and to be able to pop his ultimate. And uh, uh, now Feta, he's got to go right back to farming. He needs to finish up his drums. He needs to pick up uh, a bottle, in my mind, in order to make his mid-game aggression worth it. Era and Notale just harassing this co-op out in the middle lane just by throwing toss after toss. I think originally Notale was meant to be thrown in just then, but there was another creep that was just a little bit too close to Era just then. Yep, another toss. Range harassment to get rid of a Queen of Pain. But man, I'm so with you for the, for the, for the, the, just the need for mana. It's almost as uh, painful as watching Eternal Envy play Doombringer with uh, Shadowblade and then no extra mana, mana items mm -hmm. and think, yeah, I can still devour and use my, my mana-intensive support items. 
in order to initiate or to kill or do things like that. It makes you so much more protective. While that's that's the reason why you see players like Era, like they get the drums, they get the higher stats, they get some good intelligence behind them. It means no intel doesn't have to work Fader so hard. Bottom. We're gonna relocate, and you're right, coming down towards the bottom lane, they go on Fader, and this is where they start to shut down the ability for this Ember Spirit to function, but pass as well as Mad. They're waiting here in the oh, middle lane. Man. Queen of Pain blinks up. They've got Finger of Death. They require it, but they just let the Wisp go back. And that's a worthwhile trade. Shutting down the Ember Spirit for a Wisp. He relocates. He's done his job. Yeah, that was just good awareness there from No Tail, knowing not to bring his ally back. Instead, they're just going to go ahead and push in bottom. If they want to try and push in middle, just make a trade. Fnatic are not pressured to be aggressive on Sigma whatsoever. They can try and shut down the Ember Spirit every once in a while with a good relocate and, and maybe harass the Quap out, but it's not on them to really be pushing down towers and taking objectives. That's totally on Sigma. Yep. But the funny thing is, Fnatic can do that anyway. Mm -hmm. Like, they, they have... Uh, they have a Wisp uh, and Tiny combination. If, even if it's just to relocate in for a, for a four level toss, you're still dishing out that damage to the tower. You got a Bat Rider with a Blink Dagger running around inside the Radiant Jungle, stacking it and farming it up. He's got a huge injection of money over on that Bat Rider. And then you had Harney the entire time all, that fight, all those fighting was going on. He was free farming up top lane, finishes up his Ring of Aquila. Is about to finish up his treads as well, and he's already to fight. And you got to fly with one level up Mass Sephamorts, which he's been begging to put in range of a tier 1 tower. This is always the fear, right? If, if you go for a more mid-game oriented lineup, you need to be able to win your lanes. And look at that CS chart. The fact that Slark has made it back into top three yeah. after what was a pretty harassive lane he was dealing with is a very, very bad sign. You can go for all the mid-game aggression you want, but if you don't win your lanes, you won't have enough power going into the mid-game to make your lineup worth it. And so much of about it was winning your lanes. You look mm -hmm. at the third person in the net worth, that's a bane, man. That's a Bane. Yeah. Who's sitting, okay, now he actually got zoned out by the Slark. But the Bane is as your first one. It was meant to be a quick mech coming up from him. And it just hasn't worked. So while you're not getting... You farm your effort you put in there. Top lane, Miguel, dead. Look at the TPs coming in. They've got to cancel it. Mass up more to here, and so is Era. Avalanche, oh, toss, God, Mad's getting hit by this. The only will go. The Finger of Death will bring down No Tell, but this actually causes them a couple more problems. Fader, he's able to escape from this one, but while Era's on the front lines, he's got toss available again. May as well. In fact, he throws the Quap in. The Quap volley will go, but Harney's already over on Fader. Almost burning down. In fact, he will do so. Damn, that range is high. Um, <laughs> Era turns around for another Avalanche, but so moving so quickly because he's a hasted chicken will be able to escape himself away from this but the tower goes down the mass open wars did their job Hero finds himself with another kill and he's not wanting to abandon the top lane just yet well, uh, okay, so, you know, earlier I asked about maybe how many off, how many times has Fader really played Ember Spirit. That was some really good play by Ember Spirit. I feel like I have to, like, showcase that good play of his be because of that little bit of a flame earlier, but it's just the honest oh, truth the that his Ember Spirit rotations aren't really doing much, and uh, it, it was really, really early for Ember Spirit rotations, too. Like, I know Sigma, it's up to them to be aggressive, but moving around with your pretty much one position carry as uh, at eight minutes in, that's a little too aggressive in my mind. But mm -hmm. Sigma, they just had this opportunity. They did have some small plays there. Maybe they had a slight injection of gold that gets uh, now drums finished up on Feta. Level 10 as well. Like, despite the fact that, sure, they made a trade there, that was actually really good for Sigma because it was on the levels on the Quap and levels on the Ember. Fight middle lane, Avalanche Hooray. They're trying to finish the denial on the tower, but the catapult wins, and in comes Fader. Gets a nice double stun over on Nortel as well as Fly, and Soshka follows up with a very quick screen. This means the two supports are going to go down, and then also put Relocate on cooldown. Harney, long way out of position, and he hit by that ultimate from Matt. He's able to dive packed and run himself away to safety. The Batrider Firefly is also keeping him out of the tree line for the moment. Yeah, a good initiation already, and Sigma can now move this momentum down to the tier 2 tower. Not fully, though. Yeah, actually, yeah, they've lost their creep wave. They're going to have to back up. That, that was pretty much perfect, right? They got those levels on an Ember Spirit and a Quap, and then turned that into a really good team fight where you saw those abilities shine. Like, the extra levels and Searing Chains coming out, uh, doing a lot of work. In, in those two supports just got gobbled up by that Searing Chains. just tore them apart. So, they need to continue this, though. They can't back up for a moment. Oh, Era. Ooh. Miguel, he's done Ooh. the Fiend's Grip. There's a jump in as well from Fader, but now with the Batrider jumping in, he goes over on Soshka. Avalanche and one quick punch in from Tiny. And they're looking for more. Fader 
He had to use his one charge in fact to get his mana back again, but with a toss in on No-Tail, they turn, they stun. There's a quick brain sap mount too, which means they got the Nukic into the Fiend's grip over an era. Hex, wards, fly, trying to give him the cover fire. Quad Poly will fly. Oh they God. needed that to get the kill at the same time. It's actually an unstoppable streak being ended with that. And if Vader, low on life, Trixie can't finish the job. He's held here. They're actually going to lose four heroes underneath the Mass Serpent wards. And they stay alive long enough. Without losing a single hero, they take out four of Fnatic's, and I think Fnatic are highly regretting going for that fight. They weren't ready. They were not ready. No. Sigma, they thought that that was a guaranteed, like, couple of kills. They thought that they were just going to be able to chase down Sigma, and there's no way that Sigma can turn. But Sigma had this really, really good, well-executed, well-communicated turnaround where they pretty much uh, did everything they possibly could perfect in that turn. So really, really well done by them. And that was on Fnatic, right? They, they paid over-aggression with uh, some over-aggression of their own. Honey. He's jumping in right now with a tether in the balls. They can't keep, pick off Miguel. In fact, he goes into the brain step and no tell. He can't survive on the front lines. This man has no drums. He has no nothing. He has no massive line points. And Fader's about to jump up again. Can't do it just yet. Avalanche toss. Miguel's on the sidelines. Fader chickened up as well as now shackled. He'll die. And that's a good spree for Tani. It's a double kill for him. Over towards Matt. They want to give him this last hit, but the Batrider will take it. Now move down towards the bottom lane. No matter how great that fight was for Sigma in the middle lane, Era is now 500 gold away from an Aghanim Scepter. We're at crunch time right now for Sigma. And this gets even worse because they just lost a gem. Mad had picked up a gem before that team fight and now just threw it away to Fnatic. And that's exactly what you don't want to do up against this sort of global ganking strategy. With the Batrider being able to set up the relocate ganks, you need as much vision as humanly possible to make sure that you survive and that you make sure that you actually have those openings to get aggressive and you aren't continually being picked off by Fnatic. Like if Fnatic get pickoffs, this game's over. They, like, you can't afford to give away single hero pickoffs to Fnatic because it just delays your whole entire lineup, which is meant to be a pre-35 minute win for them. It actually gets even worse than that too. Because you're running around with the hero like a slark, he's instantly going to notice when there's an observer ward around oh, yeah. him. So there really is no way to keep everything hidden from them. Fnatic will basically force Sigma to go blind on the map with not a single observer wall. But Sigma, they want that gem back. They're coming for Hardy on the top lane, but what are they supposed to do? He's just going to shadow dance his way out of here if they can't get continuous stuns. And now Batrider scouts it out. There's the first one on Hardy, but into the Dark Pact and, sh and Shadow Dance. They're backing up while Hardy's searching for one quick pickoff. Leave an observer ward behind him. They can't get rid of this. There's no sentry wards over on the line of, of Sigma. So the tier 1 tower will be traded, because Era is already taking out the tier 1 tower in the mid. So it's just a straight trade for trade. It's not good for Sigma, but it's what they have to take right now. Just getting closer to the base, right? Just anything they can. See, see that's not enough, though. Oh, it's it's not. It's absolutely not. But what else can they really do? Uh, they, they're just pretty much they're at the mercy of Fnatic. Fnatic, if they play overly aggressive and, and make too much of their lineup, which is more of a, a mid to late game oriented lineup, if they make too much of it and try and fight early and they give a bunch of kills away, yeah, Sigma can come back into this game. But as it stands, with uh, Fnatic already with a 3,500 gold lead, you can't really is sure that you're going to be able to, to end Fnatic in the next 5 to 10 minutes, which is really what you should be looking at for Sigma. Sigma have a draft that they need a serious advantage by 25 minutes, and they, right now, it's 20 minutes in, they don't have anywhere close to an advantage. Do you see what they're trying to do as an advantage? I don't know if Soshka is, like, if he goes for a Lincoln Sphere right now, I really feel that he's out of this game. But yeah. if this is a rushed up side to Vice, they can lock down Harney before he gets that BKB mm -hmm. off and pick him up. I know they've still got a huge problem, which is going to be that Tiny, who, after picking up an Aghanim Scepter only a couple of moments ago, is walking around with 2.4k gold. This could be a very quick AC. Oh, we're relocating out and coming to bottom lane. Mad, lassoed, controlled, and dead. Meanwhile, up on top lane, Harney pounces away. Fader, unable to get the lockdown Harney as well. But this is now going to be the tier 2 tower dying on the bottom lane. And a rather aggressive item coming out from the Batrider too. To see Trixie, Pick into a, uh, oh, <laughs> Hira, uh, he wants to fight up against Fader. The Mass Serpent wants it down two pass. Comes in, turns Hira into a frog for now, but Fly, trying to pick off Miguel. Oh, he's got nuked down himself, but the Nightmare, in fact, saving him for the moment. Fiend's Crypt over to Trixie, but there's just oh, not no. enough time. In comes the Tether from No-Tail. He keeps their spirits alive, not to mention Hira, swinging into Miguel. Turn the other way, hit on actually the hero, not the creep wave. Flame Break, just off target. 
Avalanche, not available. So they can't get the TPing out here, but the tier 2 tower still does take a fall. And what do we end up doing? One for one in that trade? <laughs> Hello? Really thought that was going to be a little bit more in favor of Fnatic right there. And do they have a gem still? Not on these heroes. No. Gem's over on the Slark, who's not with Soshka. But hey, does he have, he's got Sting, he's got Scream. That's no Tails death. They may be out of turn for a quick kill. Avalanche toss, jump in with the lasso. No Tail will tether himself to Eero. He'll actually live through this with a one charge as he managed to pick up just then. Yeah, and he's actually going to get a Vlad's for his uh, big carries. So both Tiny and Slark are really going to appreciate that pickup. And when you have like a big luxury item like that on one of your supports at 21 minutes in, uh, it's a really, really bad sign. You so, mean luxury? You get a Blink Dagger yeah, or a Swallow luxury. from a Shadow Shaman. Mm -hmm. And now we're getting an almost a full AC over on Tiny. Uh, he's a recipe away from a full AC. He'll give back to, uh, to Wisp what Wisp gives to him. Yep. This is, this is so problematic for Sigma. They're going to have to be fighting through so much armor with so little armor while this lifesteal going the other way. And you've got the huge uh, clearance with the, uh, with the cleave coming out from Era. Yeah. You're seeing its effect right now on the Ancients. Imagine if this was a hero. Yeah, combine, uh, pretty much you combine the top two net worth for Sigma and they're, they barely eke out Era's net worth right now. You give it a couple more minutes and Era will have double. Uh, any hero on Sigma, which is just crazy to talk about for only 22 minutes in. Like, he is so far ahead. He's about to pick up his second big item while Feta still working Ooh. on his first. Are they are they considering? No, they're looking up towards top lane. still see Hani up here. Fnatic are going solo Roshan right now. Yep. Uh, I say solo. It's a, du it's a duel, possibly even three hero Roshan, while Hani is pulling all the attention of Sigma. They smoked up to originally look over towards Roshan. That was the path it looked like. There's no other reason for them to go where they went. But now they're also trying to use Queen of Pain as bait. Fnatic aren't taking it. They're too busy bringing down the big man. And with Roshan dead, that means Assault Curas. I believe there will be enough money for Era to finish that. Mm -hmm. uh, Flyers already goes level 2 wards, so that doesn't matter. But it's going to be really good experience in levels. And yep, there's your AC. So AC is up. Aegis the Immortal is well over on Tiny. He's still got a haste room bolted up on top of this. Hmm. And now what? We're going to rack it up even more DPS with a Maelstrom into Mjolnir coming up for Slark. How many times have you seen that on a Slark? Like, it absolutely makes sense. The item is, is very, very suited towards a Slark. Soshka initiated on. Whisper locates coming into. They want to ensure that kill. Wow. Avalanche and Toss. That, that is meant to be their late game potential. Lincoln Sphere won't protect this quad. No, I'm, no I'm, not. It's, it really doesn't protect her at all. But she can't use Orchid because if she buys up an Orchid, she'll die straight away. So she's looking for stats while having a Disable. Would have been the Scythe of Vice, but you would have never got enough money to get to that point. So the world crumbles around. Yep, so with the Perseverance being picked up, we're going to see Lincoln's out of Quap. And granted, like, you look at that damage, you go, how are you going to survive that? Well, as long as you, the, the Bat Rider Lasso doesn't land, it, you, you will actually be able to survive as a quad, but that's not going to give you a winning advantage. Sure, you'll be able to avoid some of the ganks coming out from Fnatic, but avoiding is not the same as winning. Yeah, Like, you're just delaying the inevitable at this point in time. So, uh, right now, Feta, I'm interested to see what item he's going to pick up, though. That's that's really the big question mark for me. Is is he going to go it's, for it's Desolator? Gotta, it's got to be a Deso. It's got, yeah. I, I, I would agree. Th there's no other choice right now. If it be for tower push or be it for just getting a slight advantage before the fight begins. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing. They've got to look at doing, uh, whatever damage they can dish out from being inside their base. Uh, Sasha Shaw also looked at blinking into a tree Hasted line. Yeah. With Fly with a blink dagger, they have enough initiation that Hera, he just triggers the haste rune, gives the bottle back over towards no tail. Actually, that wasn't even a haste rune. That's just his basic movement speed. <laughs> He's... Unless no, the, the haste rune ended. Okay, he okay, because yeah. I, I click on him directly after him. Like, okay, now <laughs> yeah, he's going yeah. a little bit slower. Like, that can't be his base movement speed. Now, jump in as well. Miguel, that's his base movement speed. With Trixie with that Mask of Madness, he moves so quickly. Ember Spirit bounces around them, but yeah, still no buy up from Ember Spirit for his item. If Fnatic wanted, they can just go high ground. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Nothing can stop him. There's two levels up in Mass Open Wars to be used. And there they go. Make a buffer between era as well. Look at the tree reach. He's on the other side of the mass open wards and can still hit the tower. Yep, you do not mess with uh, a big tiny like this and he doesn't even have his uh, last upgrade, right? He doesn't even have level 16 yet. Yeah, that's not the full grow. 
But there goes mid racks. Another quick jump in from Fader. He gets one quick uh, hit, but then Fa'ira hits back with a stun. He's got Toss available. He was about to do it, but then got stunned up himself. But now Shadow Shaman, he managed to get a very nice slash there on Fader. Good jump in as well by Soshka, but with the Firefly that's up and running, they just can't win this game. There's just too much power coming out from Fnatic. They lose the Shadow Shaman, but really at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. GG is called. Game number one will go to Fnatic. And that is going to wrap up our game, at least for our first match here in the best of three. We'll be having ourselves a short break and coming back where we'll see if Fnatic can qualify themselves in. If they win the next game, they will in fact progress themselves through into the quarterfinals of the D2CL playoffs for Season 2, which is where they will face up against, well, actually, I'm not quite sure. It'll either be, uh, it'll either be Virtus Pro or it'll be Cloud9. They're the other two which progress through into the quarterfinals from Group 2. Right now, though, the Alliance sitting rather pretty in second position, but if Fnatic win this, they go 2-2. They take third position. They knock Rock's Kiss as well as Sigma out of the D2CL. Stay tuned, and we will find out who will be the guest to advance through into the playoffs coming up on Tuesday.